Hey, what's up you guys? I got a short video here talking about my experience in England because before I went last month, a lot of you guys were saying to take pictures of some of the stuff that I went to go do and then make a video talking about it. So that's exactly what this is. However, it should be noted before I do anything that I went kind of on a personal trip to see my girlfriend and spend time with her despite everything going on in the world. And because of everything going on, I had to quarantine for two weeks. So for the first two weeks of the month that I was there, it actually wasn't even a full month. Uh, we didn't do anything. We stayed inside and just kind of cooked food and stuff. And uh, out of respect of her privacy, and I guess in turn my own privacy as well, I do have pictures of us together, but I'm not going to show them here because I don't think it's really anybody's business. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be like a little slideshow of uh, some of the pictures that I did take and uh, keeping in mind that I was quarantined. So let's get right to it. The first picture is of fajitas. Doesn't it look good? I don't know. I was excited making it. And, uh, yeah. Fajitas, dude. They're not England exclusive, but this was during the quarantine. So, like, the next couple pictures that we're going to see here are just kind of, like, walking outside just to get some fresh air while quarantining. So this is a picture. I was in the north of England. I flew into the south and then had to take a coach up because it was the only airport accepting direct flights from the U.S. right now. But yeah, this is uh, in the north of England. This is kind of like what it looks like every day. It's pretty cloudy, and it always looks like it's about to storm, but then it doesn't, although it does rain quite a bit. But even still, I don't know, I just like the valleys. I realize like a lot of it is farmland and stuff. Lots of sheep. And compared to where I am in Georgia, in the United States, everything is just pavement and the same copy paste suburban brown and commercial crap so to see this i mean even in my most rural areas that i've lived before like in new jersey and stuff you don't get views like this with these like perfect valleys and stuff it was definitely pretty neat and there's just kind of more of it <laughs> yeah you can see the buildings are all brown that was my very first comment as i was riding the coach from london up to the north I was like, just kind of baffled at how everything is brown. Anything that is potentially a building is brown in some way. And so my girlfriend was making fun of me and being like, oh yeah, you're going to go back and tell everybody, yeah, it's all brown. England is just brown and rainy. And it basically isn't, but it's, it's an old country, man. And so, yeah, it's a lot of like old bricks and stuff, browns and reds. But I mean, it's not every building. It's cool that you can see the windmills. I have a better picture of the windmills as well. But yeah, this is kind of more. I was fascinated by the, the valleys and the sheep and like the little rock fences that somebody built. It's kind of like the same shot, actually. Just more looking at, I don't know. So here we go. Look at this one. This was a little bit further on our walk, but you can see that divide of like the blue sky and the clouds that are just like always overhead. But I just found those uh, windmill things like, I don't really see them anywhere that I live, too. So just kind of more crazy valleys. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's not the most exciting thing, but if you have an appreciation of natural beauty, I feel like this is something. I mean, half the time I load up my computer, the Windows background is something like this. But obviously taken by, like, a professional photographer. <laughs> No, I like this shot, too. Look at the foreground. That, those brick fences. They're stone, rather. Not brick. I don't know, man. It's just... Like, you see this stuff in photographs all the time. And that's how you know it, right? But then when you see it in person, you're like, oh, wow, it really is like that. And it just seems like... It's easy to forget that what you see virtually of something in the real world is actually part of the real world. I know it's a stupid thing to say, but it's true. It's kind of like a weird feeling when you're there in person. <laughs> look at this dude. We were making noises at him so he would look. But yeah, we passed by some sheep real close. And this guy, he was ready, I tell you. Meanwhile, his friend is like, dude, don't look at the bipeds. Just eat the grass. So now I'm going to jump ahead from the actual chronology of my trip. But there was a day we went to Wentworth Castle... That is kind of similar pictures to what we just saw, but actually way better. It was probably my favorite day of the whole trip. It was just nice weather. And yeah, this is Wentworth Castle. If you look it up, I looked it up after because I'm not really a big history buff. But like I like to see the architecture and things. 
So that's kind of really all I was excited about. It's kind of a crooked picture. Maybe I can fix it a little bit. But yeah, this is, if you look it up, this is kind of what they show, I think. But on the actual grounds, they were saying this was the old college or something that was part of this area. But if you look up Wentworth Castle, it's actually like a sham folly is what they call it. It wasn't really anything like this building was. But then there's a part of it, Stainborough Castle, which th those pictures are really cool. Uh, that was the sham folly. But yeah, if you were to sit on that bench and look out, this is what you would see, basically. I don't know, man, just the valleys on the horizon. There's better shots of that, too, in other pictures that I took. But yeah, it's kind of just a small example. So this is that same building, but from the field on the side. And I have a panoramic shot of this that I don't know how it's going to work in a 16-9 video. But I'll see how it comes out, I guess. But yeah, this field was really cool. This is where like, I really got excited about the day. <laughs> because if this picture that I'm looking at right now fits into the video, it gives you a little wider shot of the grounds that are actually in front of this thing. And then I have an even wider shot. And if you can make out anything about this, you can see up the hill, there's another little monument thing. And I have a picture of me standing in there, too. I mean, really, it's just one of those cool places to stand, you know? So here's that other little monument. It looks crooked, but I was on a hill. And then, of course, you also have my nervous public persona where, like, I can't just be normal and stand straight and take straight pictures. <laughs> so that might be why it's crooked. Who knows? And who's that dope standing in there? Yeah, no, that's me wearing a weird hat. Because I like those hats, but I just look weird in them. But yeah, I don't know. Oh, now this picture's awesome, dude. This is when I really got excited for the day. When I saw this hill, like, I just had this huge impulse. Like, a childlike impulse to just run up it. And I did. I started running at some point. <laughs> because I'm stupid. But yeah, I don't know. It, just, it was like the perfect time. Fall is the best season anyway. Because it's stuff like this. And those trees on the right there, this is what it looks like. There's a little path going on. It reminded me of uh, Lord of the Rings a little bit when he first sees the ring wraith when they're still in the Shire and they haven't left yet. I don't know, you know, when he's like, get off the road. I don't know. I think I said that at one point because, once again, I'm stupid. But if you follow the path beyond those trees, you pass by a bunch of ferns on the grounds and stuff. And then eventually you come to this, which is Stainborough Castle. And this is the sham folly thing. It wasn't really, it was like just decoration basically meant to look like more than it actually is. But it's still, again, you don't see this kind of stuff in the U.S. really. And so I just thought this was cool coming around the corner. I like curved paths. I don't know, something about nature's curves. It's just a closer look at it. I mean, again, obviously there's better castles to go see in England, but uh, a lot of them were actually far from where we were, and we were limited with time after the quarantine and everything. Plus cost to go see stuff, especially in these times because you have to like pre-book and pay extra just to get like a, a ticket to go see stuff that normally you wouldn't have to do that. That's me standing in some archway looking tiny as I do. There's some people on the log in the background. Who are they? From that arch, though, looking out, this is what you see. It's kind of more of that big field. Actually, I think it's a different field. But again, I don't know, just the leaves on the ground and the yellow on the right. That's what it's all about, people. This is a size comparison of how I am compared to a giant castle thingy. I even felt awkward about it at the time, apparently, if you look at my closed fist hands. I don't know. Pictures are weird. But beyond that archway inside to the right is like this little towery thing. That's what this picture is, just kind of windows and stuff. But again, knowing now that it wasn't actually used for anything. It's just decoration, but it's still cool. And that's just a picture of me at the top on that bridge piece. But from the bridge, if I were to turn around and look to the left, this is what you see. It's kind of this cool wall with these towers around it. Nice little, like, courtyard. Encircled courtyard, I guess, is what it would be. I don't know. But if I were to go to the left, this is what you see. This cool curved wall with the steps. I don't know. I, I, again, the curved paths, man. When I see stuff like that, you just... You want to walk on it. I don't know what it is. It, it, shut up. But inside those towers, if you look out the little windows, you see stuff like that. It's like a very like, snapshot. It almost looks like a painting or so, something you would see in, like, a church window. But it's real. It's not stained glass. And looking up from inside of the 
little tower things. That's what you see. This is just an exterior shot of the wall thing. It, it, all of this, this whole thing made me want to play that Cossacks Back to War game. And I do have a stupid picture of me pretending I was shooting a cannon out the window because I'm dumb. But yeah. And I am that skinny. Some might say sickly. Who knows? If this panoramic photo fits into the video, um, this is what it would look like if you were standing in the courtyard. You see the castle on the left and like as you spin around the wall going. It's just like a wider shot of it all. This is just a very erect monument. I don't know. It's a little bit off to the side. That might be because of my nervous picture taking. But walking away from the Stainborough Castle and that weird monument that we just saw, you come across this little fence thing. And uh, there's a really cool bench looking out on all the valleys and stuff. But I thought this was kind of like another cool architecture thing. And from that bench that I'm talking about, this is what you see. More sheep. Lots of valleys. I don't know. Once again, it's just like you're, you feel tempted to take a picture just because you don't really see this kind of view every day. Here's kind of a wider shot of it, too. Oh, this one's kind of blurry because we were walking, but we were walking through a field full of deer. It's kind of crazy, and I have some pictures of them. Like, we got real close to deer going to see, like, one last little monument that's on these uh, castle garden grounds or whatever they're called. Like, look at this little dude just eating some leaves. It's like the closest to a deer I've ever been without him running away. I don't know, I just thought that was kind of neat. And look at all these guys. We were like right there next to them. Some of them are just looking at us like, what the heck are you doing? This is our turf, boy. Like, look at this guy. He's one suspicious dude. He's like, I see you looking at me. But anyway, this is the monument that we walked through the deer to go see. Because it was like way away from the rest of it. I don't know what it was used for, but it's pretty cool. And there's just more of the deer just huddled up. And that's really all I took of the Wentworth Castle day. So moving on, these next couple photos I think were actually the first thing we did outside of quarantine. We went to Leeds to go see the Royal Armories. And these were just some boats that were hanging out there in Leeds somewhere. And I think this was the first picture I took out in public, so that's why it's kind of not really exciting. But inside the Royal Armories, you see this huge elephant. A lot of the stuff wasn't lit up very well, though. I don't know if it was because of the, the way the world is right now. Like, a lot of the things that are normally up and functioning are, like, at half function. There's, like, exhibits and things not happening right now because of the virus and stuff. But, yeah, war elephants, man. It's kind of crazy. That's a picture of it from the side. These were just some cool daggers. I like that one with the snake hilt on it. It kind of reminds me of the white Power Ranger sword. <laughs> of course, that's what I would relate it to. And they say the Power Rangers aren't real. This is that same case. Lots of, like, axes and stuff. Look at that mace. A dual-headed mace. This was just some crazy hockey stick-looking knife thing. I don't know. It kind of reminds me of what they carry around in the Wizard of Oz when they're, like, marching. Come some cool coats too next to it. I, don't know, I was just kind of really just taking pictures, semi reading the history because I'm weird. Oh, yeah, they had this little made up Japanese tea house in there. That was kind of neat to look at. Couldn't go in it, of course, but. Oh, yeah, and here I got fascinated by all the 007 weapons. There was this huge gun room. And uh, so what we have here is the KF7. So I took a picture of like all the guns I recognized from. The N64 game, really. And then they also had a cool thing. Uh, well, we'll get to it. So that's the KF7. And there's the PPK that we all know it was like the PP7, right? In the game. And there's the Magnum. With the Diamonds Are Forever poster in the background, too. The Tommy Gun. That was kind of more because of Time Splitters. I remember those things. These old gangster weapons that were super inaccurate. Still cool looking though. Oh yeah, in some other case they had all these cool knives and this one looked straight out of uh, the knife you get in Resident Evil. A survival knife. I don't know, I just thought it looked really cool. This one is concealed lipstick, but it's actually a little dagger. I thought that was kind of neat. There's the ZMG from uh, GoldenEye. 
is in with all this SWAT police gear stuff in this other case. And here's the case that I was about to start talking about, the one that has all the weapons from the James Bond movies and stuff. Can't really read the plaques. Maybe if you zoom in, it'll be legible. I don't know. But I was just kind of taking quick pictures and moving on. I have no idea what the heck that top weapon is with the crazy handle at the end. But, like, yeah, those are just some weird weapons, man. They were just fascinating to look at. Oh, yeah, and the case right next to that had the Rebel Alliance Blaster. Like, all these uh, sci-fi weapons that could be possible. So that was the Rebel Blaster. And here's the whole case of uh, sci-fi weapons and things. Like, you got the Aliens poster back there and stuff. But then in the later rooms, it goes back in time, and they had this really cool battlefield set up. Once again, it made me want to play that war game that I have. It was just this big case on the floor in the middle that you walked around. And here we have some riders and pikemen. Once again, making me remember this 17th and 18th century war game that I used to always play with my dad and stuff. Suits of armor. They had this really cool display set up here. Of course, you can't really, like, touch anything, but it's still pretty cool reenacting what a battle might look like. This part's really cool. We were coming down from the top floors, and they have a window so you can see the crest. This is really high up, and uh, you'll see that in a second, but this is what the, the crest looks like with all the old weapons displayed. But then from the bottom down the stairs, they have this really cool mirror, and this is what it looked like from the mirror so that you could look all the way up. I don't know, I just thought this was pretty crazy that they had this all symmetrically set up like that. And this was just in the gift shop. The thing on note here is the dude's huge bulge. Don't act like it's not the first thing you looked at. Oh yeah, then we went to this Casper's place for some cool milkshakes and ice cream thingies. And I don't know, I just thought it was cool. I like 1950s-ish motif stuff, and that's what this reminded me of. is the diner tables and booths. And then we went crazy golfing. And this was on the wall there. But yeah, it's kind of really the only picture I took there. But yeah, it was pretty cool. All kind of like black light stuff and weird props that you have to try to like get your ball through and stuff. So I know I didn't really take a lot of pictures that day, but uh, yeah, we're going to move on. I went to another museum thing, but I'm going to save those pictures. We'll get a break from that and look at more outside stuff. So this is another day where we took the train lines to uh, York. So this was just one of the train stations that we waited for them to pick us up. And then I took some pictures from the train because they were kind of crazy. So if you ignore the reflections that you can kind of see in the windows, it's kind of more crazy valleys and sheep. I don't know. It looks cool as you're going past it. And cows, man. How can you forget the cows? Brown cows. How now, brown cow? This is some kind of residential area. Lots of brown. I forget where this was exactly, but no. Whatever. I see some white buildings in there. Not all brown. Yeah, the sun finally started to come out and started to really highlight some of the fall colors. So that's, I think, why I took this picture primarily. But here we are in York. I really like the streets of this place. Everything about it. The architecture. Everything is on top of each other. Like, that red building is really cool. And then this is just a church of some kind. But again, you don't see architecture like this in the United States. This is the Great Tower of York Castle that we went to go see. It's like the only thing left of it standing in there. So before we went up the stairs into that building, this is what you see. And then in the actual thing, they have this up there telling you a little bit about it. The Castle Bailey and then the Great Tower is the part that's still standing that you can go look. And if you climb all the way to the top, you get these cool shots of the whole city of York. So that's just immediately what you see at the top of the stairs. And then I took a minute to turn around and uh, take a picture of what it looks like up there. So it's not really that tall, but still kind of neat. But yeah, then I just liked all the shots of around this thing because it's just a big circular thing. So you can just walk in a circle and see all directions from up here. I don't know what this is, but I think I was just fascinated by it and took a picture. Oh, here we have the little shambles uh, side street thing. Lots of Harry Potter things, but this was, uh, I don't know, just again, all these little shops built on top of each other. And then from the other side of it, you see a lot of the Harry Potter things because it's 
what is believed to have inspired uh, Diagon Alley, or however you say it, in Harry Potter. So then we went to Jorvik, which is a place full of Viking history. And at one point, you take this little ride, and it just kind of guides you along, and you see all these little animatronic-type guys dressed like Vikings and stuff. And so that's what all these next pictures are going to be. We got this dude with his bow and some kind of dog. And again, none of these people are real. I think that guy in the boat back there is real. He was just chilling up there for some reason. But everybody else is just some kind of figure. It smelled really weird in here too, but that was on purpose. They even said something about, you'll smell some of the smells that you would have smelt back in Viking times. Yeah, there you can see a little bit of the screens there. There was like a narration telling you history about it as you go. It's kind of cool that they built all this stuff up. Just some pigs. Not real, of course. Yeah, I remember that first guy. I was a little bit confused. It was like, is he real? And then I, it took me a moment to realize it was just some weird, like, puppet thing. They move around, too, but obviously in a still shot, you can't see. And they say stuff, too, as you go. As you can see by these two guys. The ghosts in this picture were kind of moving around, too, which was kind of weird. And then it steered you through, I guess, what would be considered like a business district in those times. So we had this dude selling different like potteries and ceramics and stuff. This guy made shoes. I don't know who that is. That was a dog. It barked at me, but it was a fake bark. Tevya? No, it's not Tevya. But it was, oh, I remember, they were saying that that lady was really rich and had no need of this poor dude's produce or something. And then that was this creepy lady, like, right up in my face. Scared me, man. Look at her. I don't know. And then this was a doctor situation, the dude dying on the bed and the dude praying or something. Oh, this thing was cool. It kept changing design. I tried to get a few pictures of it. Oh, now this has to be talked about. We just went browsing in some shops afterward. And in England, in Europe in general, people are tinier. So they have extra smalls, slim fit, and super skinny jeans. Which means if I lived over there, clothes would actually fit me better because I am some obscene alien from outer space that doesn't know what fat or muscle is. And if I try to get either, my body destroys it. So I was very happy to see these extra smalls. <laughs> and this is the famous York Minster. We did not go in it, though, because uh, we were trying to be conservative with our money. But still looks cool from the outside. And right in front of it, there was this Constantine the Great statue. Which is, I don't know. Again, just something to look at. And then I have one more set of pictures to take a look at here. This was probably the least exciting day, but kind of interesting and related to the stuff I do on this channel. We went to the National Video Game Museum in Sheffield. But it's kind of hardly a museum. But right here we see all the different versions of Donkey Kong. And they were all playable, but man, those controllers were all kinds of weird sticky. And we had to sanitize after using every station. But yeah, it was just kind of neat to see that. This is a close-up of... Uh, some of the ones that I played, I didn't play them all. But it was cool to see just the different versions and how they made it work. And also right in the front has this very depressing thing. Nothing lasts forever. Video games break. Every time you play them, you wear them out. So don't play them. But the consoles, cartridges, and controllers are made of plastic, which gradually disintegrates, and electronic components, which corrode. They break when you play them. They break when you don't. They just break. And then you have... A lonely banana N64 controller with a dead stick. This is the future, man. It's a scary thing. My N64 controllers are, like, barely surviving. And in that same case, the unplayable station is a broken PS2. I just thought it was funny to call it that. But at that Donkey Kong thing, here's the NES controllers with the little, like, thing taped on saying like which one it plays so we had the arcade and then that one 
This was a little Mario station showing a little bit of the history of Mario, so you could play the original Super Mario Brothers, Mario 64, which I played a little bit of, and it ran like crap. I don't know if it's because it was the PAL version, and it was like way slower than I'm used to. But yeah, it was weird. I got a few stars and was like, I'm done. And then uh, New Super Mario Bros. U, which I didn't play, but... I was more fascinated with the stuff in the cases around there. So we had the DK Bongos, which is just something to look at. This was kind of like all the music-type games. And then Diddy Kong Racing, man. How could you not play it? And we did. We played through Ancient Lake at least a little bit. It's kind of a random station setup. Then they had this station for Gang Beasts, which we didn't play that, but I was watching some people do it. I've seen people play that before. But anyway, just back to some of the stuff in the cases. You see some Tony Hawk boards down there. It's just kind of like weird props and joysticks. There's like a signed Super Scope. This lock-on Sega peripheral thing. More Atari joysticks and things like that. And then they had this whole case dedicated to Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. A little bit to do with the Game & Watch here and Game Boy Advance. Kind of neat to look at. Again, a lot of this seems like just stuff people collected and put in a case. Like, it's hardly a museum. And there wasn't really any decoration to make it exciting. But anyway... Then we had some more Game Boy peripheral stuff, like the Game Boy printer. Remember that thing? Jeez, man. The Game Boy camera. The Game Gear. Ah, oh, yes, the thing with the infamous battery life. I remember a kid brought that in in second grade, and we were playing Mortal Kombat or something in second grade, and then it died. There's Master Chief's helmet. I'm sure other people have it, too. But, I mean, it is part of video game history, so it does belong in something claiming to be a video game museum. There's Fallout 4 Pip-Boy stuff. Yeah, there's little Mario Maker stuff with the booklet. It's kind of neat. Amiibo Festival for Animal Crossing. The Virtual Boy. Oh, yeah, here we have the HTC Vive and just other uh, VR-type things. They also had a super old Magnavox. But, of course, this caught my eye, this Zelda stuff, all these collector's edition things. And then the little uh, treasure chest next to it as well. And they just had, like, player's guides on display. And I just figured I'd take a picture, why not? And then we have Mario Galaxy 2 stuff. And next to that, Mario Sunshine. But again, look at like how it's just set up all flopped in there. I don't know, it's just poor presentation, I would say. Like this one, too. It's kind of a random Pokemon page all bent. Ah, yes, the Game Genie. I took a picture of this because this is the very Game Genie that I think I've told this story before. My old babysitter when I was really young, he was my next door neighbor. He used to come over and watch us whenever my parents would go out and do stuff. And I remember one time he came over with the Game Genie and we were using it on the NES for something. And it got stuck in the NES. And he was pulling it by that little rubbery black plastic bit there on the right. And that part ripped off of the actual cartridge and the thing got stuck in there. So he was pulling it and it was like... That rubbery part was just barely hanging on to it still. And somehow he sliced his hand, and I just remember, like, blood gushing everywhere. So that's my Game Genie story. I just remember my old next-door neighbor bleeding to death trying to get it out of the machine. <laughs> and then we have the GameCube Freeloader, which I think I have access to. Well, now I have the GameCube Action Replay disc. I think Freeloader is separate. This case just seemed to be some kind of collectible stuff. Signatures on things and... You got an ocarina there. But, like, again, it's kind of just like, here's some things, let's plop it in there. Well, they had this cool Sonic statue, and they gave him a mask to fit the times. So that was cool, and I got a picture next to him, because I'm weird and tiny with crooked eyes. Who was that guy? But, yeah, despite the, like, lack of presentation here, they did have some cool stuff. Like, this is the true Nintendo Dolphin, not the emulator, but the actual Dolphin. So you have this huge box part, and then off to the side there was like this weird cartridge thing, and then they tell you about it. Before it was released to the public, the Nintendo GameCube was known as the Dolphin. This unit was 
used by developers to create games for the system. It includes four controller ports, but not the optical drive that the final GameCube hardware would use. Instead, games are stored and loaded on NPDP cartridges, which actually contain a hard drive with enough storage for four games and which emulate the console optical disk system. So yeah, that's just kind of crazy. Then they had a GameCube test kit. I just like that color GameCube. Did they ever make that color GameCube? And then they had this PlayStation 2 tool developer thing with a free Radical sticker on it. And I actually did see on the National Video Game Museum, these people, they have a video on YouTube and they talk about this and mention Graham Norgate, the guy who did a lot of the music for Time Splitters, who worked for Free Radical, who worked for Rare. And Graham said something on Twitter like, oh, so that's probably one of the stolen ones. There's another crazy GameCube thing, the Dolphin NPDP Reader, a special version of the GameCube console which was used during the game development process. It was primarily used for alpha and beta testing to identify bugs and glitches that needed to be fixed before a game was released. Kind of cool history, like this part I was actually fascinated by. And then they had a similar thing here for the DS, connected to some crazy box, but they had nothing explaining why. It was just there. This was cool, I just took a picture because I like colored joysticks and buttons. It reminds me of Ninja Turtles, and yeah, there's a picture of that coming too. But this is a Super Snowball Fight Party. I think we tried to play it. No, we didn't. We played something else. They had this Mario Paint thing with a CRT. I don't know, it just made me happy. Ultimate Chicken Horse. Yeah, this is what we played. It's like you have to like design things and try to make it to the end and destroy all the other players in the process. It's weird. It's like a Mario Maker weird thing. But then they had this Sonic the Hedgehog station where you could play uh, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle in the middle, which was, I mean, understandable, but also kind of a weird one. Seems like they do like the beginning, middle, and end with these things. Same thing on the other side, which was Mario. And there it is, the original Turtles arcade cabinet. We played it. That picture is kind of crap because it's just the character select screen with only Donatello active, but... Yeah, I played as Michelangelo and my girlfriend was Donatello. And we played through it quite a bit, actually, before we just got bored and said, we're done. Then they had Sonic All-Stars Racing. I didn't get to play this, though. People kept sitting on it, and we kept missing our chance to go do it. So I wanted to play it, but we didn't. I took a picture of some random dude playing Gunblade. We played that. That was fun just to play those old school. I remember playing something like that on the Sega Saturn. Yeah. But as you can see by this plane wing picture, that's really all I took because we kind of just spent time together and did a lot of like the typical stuff, going out for food and hanging out and stuff. And we only did a few of the museum things and we didn't have too much money to spend. So that's what I saw. And this is just taken off from London. So there's random shots of the wing and all the brown buildings of London. No, I'm just kidding. But it is interesting, like, that's that's London down there. And then when we land in Atlanta, you'll see a difference. And it's, I don't know, I just like shots from the wing. I was glad I got a window seat, because I didn't pay for it. I just, they were making you pay to select your own seat. I'm like, I'm not doing that, but then I lucked out anyway. And then clouds, man, how can you not take pictures above the clouds? It's just cool. And again, look at those English clouds. Just that overcast gray is just always there. I like the flight tracker thing on the planes, too. I tried to get a picture of that leaving London. Heading around, and then that was my ultimate path, just doing the huge loop back to Atlanta. Interesting that they go up that way, but I guess it makes sense. And this was the plane meals, man. It was actually really good. This was on the way back. That was, uh, what was that, barbecue chicken? Either way, it was good, man. I ate that thing. There's so much anxiety, though. They give it to you, and then, like, two minutes later, they come around, and they're like, you got garbage. Like, I'm still eating. Chill out, man. Nobody can... I'm not Kirby. But it was good, though. And the way there was good, too. Look at it. Are you hungry? But you eat, and you watch movies, and you look out the window, and you see clouds, and you miss everything because you're back to your lonely life. And then you start to see trees and parking lots. And then you say, huh, I must be in Atlanta. <laughs> so, yeah, this is basically just it. Cool bridges and stuff as you come down, though.
But again, there you go. That's the landing thing. That was so hard to take that picture, man, when you're landing on a plane and it's going nuts. But I had to get a picture of the little flaps going up. But there you go. Those are just my random pictures from my England trip. I know it was not the most exciting thing. I'm not. A, I'm anxious in public and my hands shake, so I can't take straight pictures. But that's what happens. So there you go. That's a little bit of what I did in England, just very briefly. It's more than it looks like, and I had a great time, and I miss it dearly. I hate being back to the same old lonely, boring routine, but... Yeah, well, such is life, you know. But anyway, hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you for the gaming content moving forward. And stuff. Bye.